Hello and welcome to this tutorial in After Effects. I'm Luisa Winters. Today I would like to go over how we could put together what we have done with keyframing, interpolation, and changing values to do that with the footage that we already have. So let's get to it. So I would like to start here in After Effects and I would like to import some files. I'm going to go back to the very first movie that I was doing that I was using some Inner Harbor clips here and I'm going to bring in all of them. So they're all in here and I'm going to create a composition that is going to be Ultra HD. That way my clips uh, will all fit nicely inside of it because I have some Ultra HD and some that are uh, really 4K. All right, let's go ahead and do that. For that, I'm going to choose one of my Ultra HD clips and let me see, this one is Ultra HD. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to choose New Comp from Selection. Now I'm going to rename that composition. And I can do that simply by clicking on the composition in the project panel and then pressing Enter or Return and then typing the new name. I'm going to call this Sequence of Clips. Press Enter or Return again and there you go, it's renamed. So now I'm going to use all of these clips and I'm going to put them in the timeline. So I click on one, press and hold shift and then select the last one. All of them are selected and now I can just drag them down. I'm going to delete the first ones. Otherwise that same one is going to be there twice. So, okay, I'm going to make this a little bit taller so we can see all of our guys. And I'm going to make my clips all the same length. For that, I'm going to put my playhead a little bit to the left of the shortest clip. I'm going to select my clips and now I'm going to use a shortcut, which is press and hold Alt, option on the Mac, and then use the right square bracket. Notice that all of my clips now are trimmed to that location, which is where my playhead is. All of my clips are the same length. Now I'm going to press S for scale and notice that all of my clips are selected in the timeline. If I want them to be 25%, all I need to do is type that on one of them and all of them are now 25%. It's taking a little bit to refresh, but all of them are indeed 25%. Now I want to keyframe them so that they go from left to right. Easy, right? They're still selected. P for position. I'm going to now move my playhead all the way to the left and I'm going to keyframe one of them. Because they're all selected, all of them are keyframed now. And now I'm going to scrub my number so that my clips disappear all the way to the left. So that's pretty easy. All of them disappear to the left, all of them are going together, so piece of cake. I'm going to move my playhead towards the end of the program, so the end of my clips, and I'm going to change, change this value so that my clips disappear to the right. So now all of my clips are going at the same time, at the same speed, so of course I only see one. And in fact, there you go, let me just scrub it here so that you see what's going on. I'm only seeing the top one because these layers, how they work is that they work that you see them from the top down. So if I have something on top that is covering everything else, of course, I'm not going to see what's under it. The idea that I have is to have them play one after the other to create a kind of film strip effect here. Okay. So all I have to do is now deselect my clips. For that, I'm going to click on the gray around here somewhere and see how now they're all deselected. I still only see one clip, but at least all of my layers are not selected. I'm going to grab layer two and I'm going to move it to the right like yay. Till about yay, I would say. If it starts later, you know, they're going to go one after the other. So the trick here is to have one after the other start pretty much at the same rate of change, each one of them, right? So all I need to do is find out by how much do these overlap. And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to press the letter O. That takes my playhead 
to the out point of that layer. Look at the time code number. It says 30, so 30 seconds and 20 frames. So 30, 20. Okay. I'm going to select the other one and I'm going to press I. And now I have 605. So 30 seconds, 20 frames minus 6 seconds, 5 frames is, let me see, 30 minus 6, 24, 20 minus 5, 15, 24, 15. So these overlap by 24 seconds, 15 frames. Select them all. Control A, Command A does that. And now, animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, overlap. So we're going to turn overlap on, and they are going to overlap by 24 seconds, 15 frames. I think that's what we said. So all I'm going to do is type 24, 15, and click OK. Now, what is happening now is that my composition is not long enough, so I'm going to make it longer. So, composition, composition settings, and see how this duration is 49, 12. I'm going to make it two minutes, so two, zero, 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 zero. And now I'm going to zoom out. Let me play this for you. They're coming a little bit slow, but they are coming. And all of them are overlapped by the same amount. So you're going to see the frames coming in one by one. So the beauty of this is that this works whether you have 10 clips or 1,000 clips. It's not any longer than what we did here. Let me scrub the timeline so you can see it better. So you can see this wasn't really difficult to do. Now, it can be even cooler than that. I can select all of my clips, right? So Control A, Command A does that. And I can now pre-compose these. Pre-composing these simply means putting all of these into a composition so that all of these will look and act like one clip. And this is how we do it. With all of the clips selected, go Layer, Pre-Compose. Notice the shortcut, Shift-Command-C, Shift-Control-C on Windows. This new panel opens up. I'm going to name this Inner Harbor Film Strip. Oh, I can't type strip. There you go. And now when I click OK, all of those clips will look and act like one. And this is the beauty of it. I can duplicate it. And again, I'm pressing Command D. And now I can move one layer down, one layer up. Let me just um, put position on these. So one layer, uh, let's say this layer up, this layer down. And now all of my clips are going at the same time. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So um, that's pretty cool, but you know what? I would like to flip the top and the bottom one. I'm also going to rename them. So which one is which? This one is the top, so I'm going to rename this top. I can rename it by selecting the layer, pressing Return or Enter, and I'm going to name it Top. The middle one is going to be the bottom. Select the layer, press enter or return, name it bottom. And then this one, by default, has to be the middle. And that's it. Now I know who is who. I'm going to flip the top and the bottom. I can flip it a number of ways. So I can go layer, transform, flip horizontal, flip vertical. I'm going to flip it horizontal. And I'm going to do the same with the bottom. Layer transform, flip horizontal, and now I'm going to have an animation that goes one way and an animation that goes another way. I'm going to make this really poor to see if it will play real time. You can kind of sort of see it, 
These are humongous files. Uh, most of them are 4K, and it's actually playing uh, real time on a laptop. So, you know, not too, too bad. So I can take it even bigger than this. I can select these three, and I can pre-compose these. And I can go layer, pre-compose, and I'm going to name this three film strips, for example. And now all of those look and act like one layer. If I want to make it look even cooler, all I have to do is make the layer 3D. And I can do so by clicking right under this cube shape icon here in the timeline. And now if I press R for rotation, I'm going to see the rotation for X, Y, and Z, and I can see the orientation as well. Look at the X, it's rotating on the side-to-side -side axis. So it's rotating like yay, I'm going to have it like yay. The Y rotation is rotating on the Y axis, that's up and down, right? And then finally, the Z rotation, which is the one that we are familiar with. So I'm going to have it a little bit more laying down and a little bit more yay. And now I'm going to change the scale so that it is bigger. S for scale, R for rotation. So I can change this to a little bit yay. And in fact, I'm going to scale it up a little bit more because why not? And I'm going to move it to about yay. That in itself could be a super great opening montage for really any of the clips that you are presenting to your client, even for your demo. And quite frankly, it took about maybe five, six minutes explaining. It's because I was telling you how I was doing it. In real life, it would have taken me maybe a minute, a minute and a half. All right, I'd like to leave it at that for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>